Hello, good morning. Um, pretty sizable crowd for a Sunday morning. I'm pretty impressed. Um, I think the one thing that stands out for me this morning is how similar Airbnb's journey is um, to Pinterest, New Relic, uh, PlayStation, all of these other companies. Um, we've all kind of been facing the same infrastructure challenges and we've all kind of been following a similar path and we all end up converging on Spinnaker, which I think speaks volumes about Spinnaker kind of as a CD um, platform. Um, so who am I? My name is Jens. Um, as mentioned before, I'm originally from Belgium, the medieval city of Bruges. Um, I uh, was originally a film engineer and then started working on developer tooling, um, started working on Airbnb's internal uh, deploy tool, and now I kind of bring that uh, front end knowledge um, to uh, our continuous delivery team, so I'm here to represent Airbnb's continuous delivery um, team. Um, so Airbnb has been growing very rapidly over the past decade. Um, some of you might be staying at an Airbnb uh, to visit the conference. Um, there are about 81,000 cities on Airbnb, uh, 191 countries, so it's really um, a global enterprise. Um, and so with that rapid growth, uh, we've also started seeing some cracks in our infrastructure, um, some challenges kind of scaling our infrastructure. Um, so the first thing we did is we needed to split up our monolith. Um, so similar to Pinterest, we had um, a monolith. Um, it's called Monorail. Um, so monolithic Ruby on Rails application. Um, and it's very big. Um, just to put some things into perspective, it's about 30,000 database columns. Um, it's about 1,500 engineers kind of contributing code. Uh, we tried to deploy um, 200 changes a day. Um, it didn't work out very well. Um, so we moved to this uh, paradigm of uh, microservices. Um, so we're now splitting Monorail into two monorepos, or I guess dual repo in this case. Um, Hyperloop and Treehouse. Um, so Hyperloop, uh, the next evolution of Monorail, which will house our front-end code, and then Treehouse, um, which will house all of our Java backend services. Um, you might wonder why Treehouse. Um, the most popular listing on Airbnb is a Treehouse. It's on the island of Java. Uh, the Monorepo holds Java backend codes, but therefore we call our repo Treehouse. Uh, Naming is always fun. Um, so this is the glorious future we're all working towards. Uh, we'll have Hyperloop and Treehouse, no more Monorail. Really looking forward to this day. It's a couple of years out, but this is a beautiful picture that I'm looking forward to. <laughs> um, so this is also another beautiful picture, um, the rapid growth of our uh, microservices in SOA. Um, so as you can see, uh, since 2017, we've kind of had this exponential growth uh, of microservices. And so um, that caused a bunch of challenges. Uh, this is an actual picture of me a couple of months ago uh, trying to keep the lights on. Um, we saw some deployment challenges in uh, service-oriented architecture. Um, so what are some of the challenges uh, for Airbnb? And I'm sure other companies have faced similar issues. Um, we didn't have a qualified deploy process. Um, so what ended up happening is um, nobody actually knows how to deploy uh, someone else's service. Um, so what ended up happening is people write these run books. So if I want to deploy a payment service, I actually have to read this run book and hopefully I'm doing it right. Hopefully I'm not taking down uh, Airbnb.com if everything goes well. Um, but worst case scenario, it causes an incident and a post-mortem. Um, so we have this in-house tool deploy board. It was pretty good at deploying this monolithic Ruby on Rails service. Um, it was not as good at like um, doing multi-stage releases. It wasn't doing deploy pipelines very well. Um, so actually it wasn't that good of a tool for this um, SOA architecture. Um, so in comes Spinnaker. Um, you might wonder uh, what are some of the reasons that Airbnb particularly um, adopted Spinnaker. Um, one thing that stood out for us is it's been proven at scale. Um, so it's running at Netflix, it's running at Google. Um, Airbnb is a pretty large company. Um, so we were pretty confident that we were going to be able to scale um, Spinnaker for our needs. Um, we are moving towards Kubernetes. Um, Spinnaker has um, Kubernetes support out of the box, so it was a natural fit. Um, there's obviously an active open source community, so you guys are all uh, one of the reasons why we are adopting Spinnaker. Um, it's built with deploy pipelines as a core concept. It's easily extensible, and we get canary analysis for free. Um, so what's not to love, right? Um, we made some extensions to Spinnaker over the past year. Uh, one of the extensions we built is um, an integration for our CI platform. Um, so at Airbnb, we don't run Jenkins. Our CI platform is more uh, kind of like a backend service. 
Um, so it doesn't really have a UI. Um, so one thing that we really missed from moving from the ploy board or internal system to Spinnaker um, was that we didn't really have a way to kind of visualize the status of our bills, um, visualize um, um, what's going on in production, and, and kind of show um, all the snapshots that you can deploy. Um, so what we did is we actually uh, pulled that data out of our backend and now visualize that into Spinnaker. Um, we'd be very happy to open source that and kind of make it more generalized um, in 2020. We'd be happy to have a conversation about that. Um, so where are we right now? Um, so I think the key part for our migration was that we didn't want to force people um, to move from the toy board to Spinnaker. Um, so we had a very careful and um, kind of data-driven approach um, to Spinnaker. Um, so the first thing we did in H1 2019 was basically uh, we needed to prove that Spinnaker actually works, that a Spinnaker actually uh, plays well with our infrastructure. So what we did is we basically converted all of the 10 uh, microservices that make up Spinnaker um, and basically deployed Spinnaker with itself. Um, so once we did that, once Spinnaker was kind of running within our internal infrastructure, we did a pilot project with some internal services, um, non-critical services, so if we broke things, um, it was okay. Um, so we basically onboarded those 10 services. So now we're in H2. Um, now we actually know that Spinnaker um, is like, it can actually run in our infrastructure. So what we did is we basically looked at all of the incidents in H1. We looked at the services that caused the most deploy-related incidents. We reached out to those people and we said like, hey, here's Spinnaker, this tool will actually make your deployment safer, allow us to kind of like wipe off on what you want to Spinnaker, and we'll make sure that you have less regressions. So we've been doing that. Um, we've onboarded all of our payment stack, we've onboarded some of our trust, some of our load balancers. And so we've actually seen um, um, a, redu a reduction in number of incidents already, and this gives us the confidence, the data, to go up to executive levels and be like, hey, Spinnaker is a good tool, um, we should drive adoption. What we've actually been seeing is some of the engineers and payments are actually now becoming Spinnaker influencers, and so now they're driving adoption kind of organically for us, um, so that's been, that's been great. So in 2020, we'll GA, Spinnaker will be available for all services at Airbnb, and then beyond 2020, we'll kind of uh, bring everyone else over and remove the toy board to, to reduce tech debt. So how's our pilot going so far? Um, we have about 40 monthly active services. Uh, we've already caught uh, 30 production uh, incidents in Q4, so if we didn't have Spinnaker, that would have been 30 postmortems, and 90% of our changes uh, deployed to Spinnaker go through some form of uh, automated canary analysis. Uh, thank you. Yeah.